Hi, Maria. Maria. Hello, good afternoon, everyone, dear friends, and welcome to this new episode of Tea with Mary. This is episode 90, it should be 90, 90 94. <laughs> so it's a big number, big score. And today we have a very important guest on this show, Camillo. Hello, Camillo. Hello, Maria. Hello, Maria. Thank you for accepting the invitation and being with us. All right, Camillo. So we say cheers, cheers. at the beginning. Ave Maria, Ave Maria. everyone. And uh, as normal, we introduce this uh, new show on a very interesting topic, a lady mediatrix of all graces, great feast that we uh, celebrate tomorrow, unfortunately. Uh, the Sunday, of course, has priority of this over this feast, but uh, <clears throat> symbolically, spiritually, we still uh, celebrate this very exquisite uh, feast day. So we will learn more about this, but it's important now that we come into the show with a prayer to our Blessed Mother. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady, Mother of the Church, pray for us. Our Lady, Mediatrix of all graces, pray, pray for us. us. Let us also pray to Saint Joseph, who is the best person, I think, to lead us in this uh, show and uh, in this understanding of a very special role that Our Lady has to be the mediatrix of all graces. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Saint Joseph, pray, pray for us. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Right, episode 94, almost getting at uh, episode 100, and we have to celebrate this, uh, this big score one day, one Saturday. Right, today we want to, look, to learn more about this uh, Marian doctrine, Marian truth, Our Lady as the mediatrix of all graces. It is a liturgical feast, which was given by the Holy See upon a request by the Cardinal of Belgium, Cardinal uh, Mercier, who in 1921 uh, petitioned, even a little bit before, but he petitioned the Holy See to have the possibility to celebrate liturgically the Feast of Our Lady Mediatrix of All Graces, actually was asking for a dogmatic definition as well of this important truth. The Holy See replied with the concession of a liturgical feast. The question about defining dogmatically the mediation of all graces was left a little bit aside. It was complicated. We now know the reason why it was a bit complicated, because there was one member of the Holy Office at that time, a Dominican priest, theologian, who voted against because of the complication of the co-redemption, which was meant uh, to, to, to be present within the framework of Our Lady Mediatrix of all graces. But meanwhile, the Holy See gave the liturgical feast to the diocese, to the Belgium nation, and also to all dioceses that would request it. 1921, that liturgical celebration was given, appointed to be celebrated in the Diocese of Belgium and uh, whatever it would have been asked on 8th of May. That's why tomorrow we celebrate uh, now, as I said, more spiritually, but we celebrate Our Lady, Mediatrix of all graces. Right, now we have Camillo, who uh, wants to help us understand some the doctrine relative 
to this beautiful dogma. So Camillo, if you are ready now, yes. it's your turn. Uh, sure. <laughs> so yeah, I just thought I'd start um, with a little bit from the Pope's. Yes. Uh, what they've said about Mary's role as mediatrix of graces, mm. and the, most of the most of the mentions from popes uh, with the, with the term mediatrix or mediatress uh, have been from more recent popes in the last couple of hundred years, um, and it can be found this this term of mediatrix can be found in their writings of Pius the Ninth, uh, Leo the Thirteenth, uh, Saint Pius the Tenth. Pius the Twelfth and Saint John the Twenty Third. Mm. Um, so they all use the word mediatress in their writings. Most of them use this word several times. And so I can give a couple of examples. And for example, Leo the Thirteenth in Adieu to Trichem Populi in 1895 said, "So that she who was handmaid in bringing about the mystery of salvation might also be the handmaid of the grace." that was to flow from it until the end of time. And then Pius X in Ad Diem Ilum 1904 says, by this union of suffering and volition between Mary and Christ, she merited to become in the worthiest way, the restorer of the lost world. And to that end, the distributor of all gifts. And then finally from Benedict XV in Inter Sodalicia in 1918, he says, so that it may correctly be said of her that she redeemed with Christ the human race. As now, precisely for this reason, all kinds of grace that we receive from the treasury of the redemption are distributed, as it were, by the hands of the mother of sorrows herself. Um, so, yeah, we can see it's, yeah, quite, these mentions of her as mediatrics have just come from Pope's more recently, in the last couple of hundred years. And I was wondering, Father, mm. if you, perhaps you could expand on when were the initial mentions within the church, um, for, you know, from saints, for example, mm. of, of her role as mediatrix and, and how that understanding has kind of developed through time in the church. Right. Mm -hmm. We have already at the time of the church fathers a mention of Our Lady as mediatrix or mediatress, if you want, of all graces. So starting already with the 4th, especially 5th century, we have already some references to Our Lady, to this title. Strangely enough, so to say, uh, we don't have the reference to Our Lady, uh, specific, direct reference to Our Lady co-redemptrix in the Church Fathers, but we do have the reference, the title, of Our Lady Mediatrix of All Graces. Or better, we don't have Mediatrix of All Graces, but we do have the title Mediatrix applied to Our Lady. Mm. And, uh, and this is very significant, I think, because uh, uh, actually it is more difficult to understand the mediation of Our Lady than Heco Redemption, because if we want to be a little bit fussy, biblically speaking, we should say that St. Paul, and maybe this, guy, this is, could easily be an objection by people, uh, by Protestants in particular, uh, St. Paul teaches that there is only one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Why do you say that there is a lady who is mediatrix of all graces? Is this not directly contrary? to the text of the New Testament. Mm. So it's quite interesting to know that the Church Fathers were not uh, taken by the literal, so to say, meaning of that text. But despite the fact that there was a text of St. Paul teaching that there is only one mediator, they thought that a lady can be defined as mediatrix. And this is very, very interesting. The, the discussion about mediation has uh, gone on and on through the centuries up until Vatican II. During the, the Council, there was a very big debate. Uh, and some of the fathers were saying, we should avoid this uh, title because it looks like 
we are directly opposing uh, a, a doctrine contained in the in the New Testament in the Bible. But eventually the title mediatrix was inserted, was included in Lumen Gentium. We don't have the title co-redemptrix, but we do have the title mediatrix of grace. And uh, it's interesting that Vatican II explains the reason why the title is applicable to Our Lady by making an analogy. And I think this is interesting to reflect upon. The analogy is between Our Lady and the priesthood in the church. If there is no mediation of Our Lady, though under Christ, depending on Christ, then it means that there is no mediation at all in the church. So why the church? Why the sacraments? Why the holy priesthood, which is a mediation between Christ, uh, between Christ and the church, between Christ and the faithful? It is the priest who in persona Christi, as Christ, in the person of Christ, uh, ministers the grace of Christ. So, so there is a real mediation. So, as there is, Lumen Gentium says, Vatican II's document on the church, as there is a mediation which is real, uh, which is priestly mediation, to make the, the, the salvation of Christ available today, so there is the possibility for Our Lady to be mediatrix of grace. And then the title came later, mediatrix of, of all graces came a little bit later. But it's interesting, I think, to reflect on the on the uh, the title mediatrix as such, which comes from a very ancient time, going back to the church fathers. Yes. Right. Yes. <clears throat> and I was wondering also, you mentioned some of the church fathers yes. uh, that first initially started using this word mediatrix. Uh, are there any particular saints that have developed this theology understanding um, of Mary's role as mediatrix? Mm. Uh, it comes to my mind straight away a great Marian saint, the canto of Mary. And this is Saint Bernard, right? Yes. The Marian doctor. Uh, Saint Bernard is one of the main, I would say, saints, doctors of the church, referring to the mediation of Our Lady. You may remember the beautiful image that he uses to describe this mediation, the aqueduct. Our Lady is that necessary means to bring the water of grace to us, from Christ to us. So uh, with this beautiful Marian theology of Our Lady being mediatrix of all graces, the idea that Our Lady is between Christ and us was developed. And then with St. Bernard, we have all other doctors. We have uh, St. Thomas Aquinas speaks about the mediation of Our Lady as well. But St. Bonaventure, the Franciscan uh, saints. And then <clears throat> if we want to come closer to us, uh, think of the French school, which was very, very important for developing this Marian doctrine. And we can think of St. John Eudes, a very important uh, saint speaking of uh, this, this role of Our Lady as mediatrix and uh, the Immaculate Heart of Mary as that bond of union between uh, the faithful and our Lord. But then closer to us, or even more in more recent time, we have Saint Maximilian Mary Kolbe, another great Marian saint. Yes, among the saints we should say that there is a big number of saints presenting this uh, important doctrine yes. of mediation. Yes. Right. Okay. Maybe should we say something, Camille, about uh, the term mediation, the, the word, mm. how to define mediation? Yes. Would sure. you? Um, yes. So uh, what do you think we should say well, mediation is? Just the word mediate on its own right. uh, means to intervene, to intervene between two persons for the per 
for the purpose of reconciling them. Um, so clearly in, the, in this case, the mediation is of, of Mary's between us, the faithful yes. and God. And yes, I, I was interesting when I was having a look at some of St. Louis de Montfort's uh, writings in preparation for this, uh, he was saying how Jesus is the mediator, our mediator to the Father, and Mary is our mediator to Jesus. Right. So we mediate through Mary, through Jesus to the Father, right. which was uh, quite interesting. Mm. Um, yes. So yes, you're right. Mediation means uh, a connection between two extremes. And we can have also an image, a very clear image to describe it. And I think there is there is something that we normally find when we have to across a river or a, a sea as well. It's a bridge, isn't mm -hmm. it? The bridge is uh, it's a connection between two points, two extremes, uh, putting these two extremes uh, together. The bridge has the function to unite, to be, uh, to be an element of union. If we want to go a little bit even deeper, we should say that mediation means from, it's a Latin word, of course, from medium to be in the middle. In the middle, connecting to extremes. Mm. So it's a kind of person who is in the middle of two other persons, trying to make them dialogue, have a dialogue, uh, like a peacemaker, so to, so to speak, to have an idea. So the bridge, the peacemaker, the, this medium, the person, not the medium as understood nowadays, people having some kind of connection with the world, uh, the, the, the world of the spirits and so on, but medium in the, in the etymological sense, to be in the middle, to be able to make two people uh, have a relation, have a dialogue. So this is the role of Christ. But uh, Christ does not despise any other person under him, and because of him, to exercise that role as mediation. For example, uh, Camillo, if we want to be very, very practical, I think, uh, telling the people at home now listening to this show, but why is Our Lady Mediatrix? Mm. Why should I accept this doctrine? Well, I would easily reply because mediation is essential. Mediation is uh, necessary for us to go to Christ. Of course, we go through Christ. But even in our natural uh, life, we need a mediation. Don't we? we need our parents, right? To come into the world, into existence. And uh, the fact that we need the parents, this is mediation. Of course, who is creating us? Who is giving us the soul, which is the life that we receive? Only God. Mm. But that creation has a need, so to speak, of another mediation, subordinate mediation, which is the mediation of our parents. But the fact that we need our parents to come into existence, it does not mean that our parents undermine God's mediation. No, it's, it's a mediation that is uh, uh, foreseen, of course, and uh, wanted by, by God, a subordinate mediation. So uh, as the mediation of our parents is necessary, of a relative necessity, of course, so it is with Our Lady. She is necessary because she has been chosen by our Lord. She is between us and Christ. And her function is to generate us to, to supernatural life. Yes. What do you think? Yes, and just what you were saying there about why we need Mary as mediator between us and Christ. Another image uh, that St. Louis de Montfort uses uh, is, say, for example, on earth, if there's a king, we wouldn't feel comfortable going directly to a king. We'd, right. we'd, we'd, we'd need to have someone, a mediator, a friend, who, who would contact him. We wouldn't, we wouldn't feel confident enough to go directly to the king. 
if we wanted to talk to request of him something for some reason and how much more so you know christ who is who is the king of the universe um, <clears throat> who is god how much more so do we need someone right uh, to go through to him because um because he, he is god you know right um, even now if we want if you want to go to see the queen it's not that easy right That's exactly <laughs> you need some mediation exactly and it is very hard to approach directly the queen you have to see some other people right you have that function to to possibly to report that to the queen you, you it is quite unlikely impossible to, to meet directly the yes. queen and also another very interesting thing is that uh, to go to see the queen you have to, to dress in a very specific way, right? You need an etiquette to respect. Yes. Because you are going to see a very important person. But uh, reflecting on this, we can say that we need a mediation, but we have forgotten in our liturgical behavior that when we go to Christ, we need a mediation, but we need also that... Uh, predisposition we need also that preparation which is internal invisible the grace given to us through the mediation of our lady is also visible it is also the way we stay in the church with the way we dress it is not irrelevant the way we dress to be in the presence of the queen leading us to the king of kings our lord yes. but this is a strange thing of this time and this world uh, to go to see the queen, you have to be very, very attentive, and otherwise you can forget it. But to go to see <laughs> our Lord, you can do whatever you want. So right. it's quite strange. Yes. And yeah, I was just was wondering as well, um, in terms of going first to our to our lady, to our mother, to go to Christ. Just on a on a personal on a personal level. Yes. Um, there's something about Mary which is very approachable. You know, you can feel comfortable going to her. Um, there's Saint Louise de Montfort says, you know, she is good, she is tender, uh, nothing in her too sublime, too brilliant. Uh, she is not the sun who, by the vivacity of his rays, blinds us because of our weakness. But she is fair and gentle as the moon, which receives the light of the sun and tempers it to render it more suitable to our capacity. So there's something just about Mary for the faithful, which is very easy. People feel comfortable going to her with all their needs, or sometimes someone might feel almost almost afraid or intimidated or, you know, yes. ashamed of one's sins before going to the Lord directly. Yes. Um, so there's something about Mary which is very open and to receiving us, which makes us such an effective mediator. Right. Um, so you, you say that uh, it is providential and uh, it is... Um, uh, an intervention of God to facilitate our way to him. Mm. It is not an impediment. It is not a stumbling block, so to say, the mediation of our lady, as it is for Protestants and for Catholics who have a very, I would say, little knowledge of this mediation, which is very, very significant, very necessary here. But uh, yes, the mediation is not a stumbling block. It is rather a way to facilitate our approach to our Lord. It's a mother uh, guiding us and telling us how to step by step approach the altar, approach the Holy Eucharist, approach the sacraments and go to, to see our Lord. Yes, so we should thank Jesus for giving us his mother, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. Right. <clears throat> So I would, I would also suggest, Camilo, that we uh, touch a little bit upon the moment when Our Lady became mediatrix. We should first, let's, if you feel all right to say something about this, when, in your opinion, Our Lady became mediatrix. And then we can explain what's the difference between mediatrix of grace a mediatrix of, of all graces, because the title of our show is Mediatrix of All Graces. But I think we should clarify 
what is as I we we did already with mediation, mm. then mediation of grace, mm. and therefore mediation of all graces. Because some someone might say it's exaggerate mediation of all graces. What does it mean? Mm -hmm. So, in your opinion, when did our lady become a uh, mediatrix of all graces of mediatrix in general? Well, I would say yes. Following from what some of the saints have said, um, yes. the moment when all the grace, you know, Jesus, Jesus contained all grace. He is because he is God. Um, so him coming into the world, so she brought in all the grace through Jesus, who is God. So I would probably venture to say the the Annunciation when she said yes to the Archangel Gabriel. Mm. Um, Correct. It is a very fast and uh, fundamental mediation. You may imagine she said yes, and uh, the incarnation took place. God was incarnate in her, with her fiat. So without that response, without that cooperation with God, there would be no incarnation. Mm. Because God appointed her to be the mother and to freely say yes to that invitation. So uh, we have to think of the effects in case our lady, uh, in case there was no participation in that in that uh, mystery. So yes, you are completely right. That annunciation is the very beginning of her mediation of all grace. It's, it's the the beginning. It's the the moment when uh, the, the incarnation is is uh, takes place. And uh, and also the beginning of the church, because uh, if there is our Lord, the head, there is also already, initially, his mystical body present, the church. Yes. And uh, this is the reason why some popes, such as Pius X, in reflecting on Our Lady's role as mediatrix between Christ and the church, reflected upon... Uh, a particular feature that we could attribute to our lady to explain her mediation. St. Pius X, we have the image of our lady as the neck, connecting the head with the body. Mm -hmm. The head is Christ, she's the neck, and the body, the mystical body, is each one of us. The church, yes. The church. So that image is, is uh, I would say, uh, coming out right from this reflection on, on the very beginning, the Annunciation. Right. We have also another image describing our Lady's mediation, which is the heart. I think the heart is even more higher than the neck, right? Yes. Yes. The heart is a very important organ, uh, pumping life, pumping the blood. And uh, so we could say that uh, Our Lady's mediation is well represented by this beautiful image, Our Lady's heart. Uh, the heart of Mary, the, the Immaculate Heart of Mary, is that uh, bond of connection between, between Christ and the mystical body. Christ is the head, she's the heart, the mother, pumping life, generating life, and uh, we are the members. Yes. Right. Yes, so it sounds like yeah, the like you said, the Annunciation is the the point, the point in time where she became the the mediator, the mediatrix of all grace, um, when she said yes, because that would bring in the mediator uh, of our salvation, Jesus. I was wondering, are there any other points in Scripture in which we can see in her life where we can see her mediatory role, even if they're not the point where she became mediator of all grace, but we can see her as a mediator yeah. at other points in her life in Scripture. Yes, that you can think of. Yes, there are, and uh, the first one, chronologically speaking, right after the Annunciation, is the Visitation. Right when Our Lady went to see her cousin Elizabeth, that is a mediation uh, that Saint Louis Grignon describes as mediation in the order of grace. Because why it's a mediation? Because uh, Our Lady's presence. Uh, was necessary for the sanctification of John the Baptist in uh, his mother's womb. So Our Lady went to see her cousin. Our Lady greeted Elizabeth. As soon as the voice of Our Lady 
came to be had by Elizabeth, the baby left for joy. So, and this is understood normally as the moment of John's sanctification in the mother's womb. So Our Lady is her presence, her greeting, her voice is communicating the grace, the grace of sanctification. By the power of the Holy Spirit, of course, but it is Our Lady's necessary presence there. If Our Lady was not there, there was no sanctification of John the Baptist. And this is a very important moment yes. of mediation of Ali. Yes. And uh, yes. Uh, and then there is also some another important moment. If we want to uh, see a mediation in the order of nature, to qualify it with Saint Louis Grignon always, visitation is in the order of grace. But there is also a mediation in the order of nature. In the order of something which is needed for this life. Mm. And this is Cana, the wedding at Cana, right? Yes. That is explicit. Our Lady's presence there is an explicit uh, mediation uh, presence of our Blessed Mother. She was there, she was um, with Jesus, and Jesus was with his disciples, and the wine ran out because all the disciples came <laughs> and the apostles and they started to drink of course and the wine uh, ran out but our lady's maternal mediation her maternal care for that young family was to always keep an eye on the on the face on the on the that banquet and then she asked our lord they have no wine so there is a mediation there is a request there is a petition Mediation, which is also intercession here. It is being with Christ, between Christ and the people and uh, spouses, but it is also to, uh, to beg our Lord, to pray to Christ on behalf of the family, on behalf of the people. A mediation which is also intercession of our Blessed Mother. A prayer on behalf of someone, someone's need and so on. So, though that Cana uh, moment is even more significant than that uh, miracle in the order of nature, it is more than a miracle to satisfy that uh, need in that precise moment. It is rather the uh, uh, foreshadowing of something to take place later on Calvary. Cana is intimately linked with Calvary in St. John's Gospel, where there is the woman and there is the hour, there is the son who is the bride, the bridegroom and so on. So, yes. But uh, in any case, Cana is very, yes. very important. And also it's, it's where Jesus begins his public ministry. So it could, yes. be, could be seen also Mary's request to him, because Jesus says to him, what is it to me? My hour has not yet come. Right. Um, so it could also be seen her request as well as to give new, more wine, also as a request um, led by the Spirit from her to begin a public ministry as well. Right, right. Um, That's good. Yes. Also, this is another mediation. Yes. In the life of Christ, even. Yes. She's in some way uh, modifying God's plan, if we can say that. Of course, it was foreseen in God's yes. eternal will. But Our Lady's request is so important because it is the Mother's request that she was able to make the hour uh, come now. My hour has not come yet. But since you are requesting it, I do it because yes. you are my man. Yes. So more explicit than this is uh, possible. So the mediation is a mother's uh, function uh, to even in that sense, as you say, in that case, even to making the to the point of making the hour of Christ present and the revelation of Christ happen now. Right. Yes. Okay. Now. Mm. Yes. Interesting. Right. We are getting quite a few comments here. I think Camilo, they they like your <laughs> being here with us. They greet you as greeting uh, Carol Tane does. 
Ave Maria, Father Serafina, and a very warm welcome to Camillo. St. Joseph, pray for us. Yes, Camillo, this is also an invitation, an invitation to come again, possibly in the future, to be again a guest of Tea with Mary. We have also Nicola Fazzoli, Ave Maria, Nicola, hello. And then we have Rosalia, Ave Maria, St. Joseph, pray for us. And then Eleanor, Ave Maria, everyone, lovely to see Camillo on Tea with Mary. Look, Camillo, all your fans here. Yeah? Uh, <laughs> and then we have Damien Joseph from India. Hello, Damien, Ave Maria. I think Damien is asking something. If you can view his first comment, here we go. Damien, I agree that all the graces come to this world through the holy hands of Ali. But I wonder then how the prophets and the patriarchs of the Old Testament would have got God's grace to do his will? Well, a very interesting question. Yes. Camillo, do you want to reply to Damien? I just give a brief <laughs> answer. You, I imagine you could probably expand on it. It's just, I think, even though they lived before her, lived, lived before Mary, all the grace still came through Mary. Um, they just... God is not bound by time. So they still receive the grace from Mary, even though she hadn't yet been born. Correct. This is the because the grace comes through Christ in any case, right? So even the prophets, uh, they got grace, sanctifying grace. Um, though it is not yet the grace of uh, redemptive grace, the grace bought by Christ on Calvary, but it is already the capacity to be. Uh, to be saved in some way. But even to them, that grace comes always from Christ, the only mediator. And then, if he comes from Christ, it comes necessarily through Mary, from Christ through Mary, because where Christ is there is a blessed mother. We can never separate uh, Jesus from Mary. Right. And then there is also another question by Damien, following one. Was this concept of God's grace through Our Lady then not applicable in the Old Testament? It was applicable, Damien. It is applicable because, yes, if there is any grace given in the Old Testament, it is given by Christ, in view of Christ, as it is in fact the Immaculate Conception, which took place before Christ's incarnation and redemption, of course. But Our Lady was given the grace to be immaculate even before Christ died on the cross. The dogma says, in view of the merits of the, the redemption. So, Our Lady was made immaculate before, before the redemption, because as you well said, God is outside the time. All his actions are eternal. So, uh, to have an idea, as it happens with Our Lady to be made immaculate before Jesus dying on the cross, so it was in the Old Testament. For any favor granted to prophets or patriarchs, this came from Christ through Mary, in view of Christ, in view of his redemption, and therefore in view of Mary's participation in that redemption. Correct. And then another thing from Damien, Damien, the third one, could you please help us understand this concept of Our Lady as mediators of all graces with reference to the Holy Scripture? Thanks. I think we expanded already on yes. the presence of this concept in the Scripture. We quoted so far the Annunciation, then Visitation, Cana. Anything else, Camilo? Uh, yes, then there's also... There's also what well, at the foot of the cross when right, right. when uh, <clears throat> Jesus said, "Behold, woman, behold your son, and uh, behold your mother," to John. Uh, so Jesus yes. gives at that point when he's speaking to John, he's also speaking to the whole church, to all of us. And so her role is at the foot of the cross. She's given the role to be the, uh, the mother, spiritual mother of all of us, and. So God could, couldn't entrust Mary with a mission without giving her the necessary means to fulfill that mission. So if she's to become the spiritual mother of all of us, 
then we can infer from this that Mary is the mediatrix, is a mediatrix of grace. Grace mm -hmm. will come through her to all her spiritual children, all of us. Um, Correct. And then there's also as well um, uh, in Acts when they devote the apostles devote themselves to prayer together with the women and Mary, mother of Jesus. Uh, and then shortly after that on Pentecost Day, the Holy Spirit coming down on the apostles mm. to begin their ministry in the church. That's another example. Through Mary, yes, that's correct. So quite a few places in the New Testament explaining this role of Mary as mediatrix of all graces. Thank you, Damien, for your questions. Then we have Rebecca. Is there an eternal nature to the motherhood of Mary? Did she become mother to all souls at the foot of the cross and therefore as mediatrix of all graces? So Mary is the mother to all souls without any doubt and this at the foot of the cross. As you said, that presence is a maternal presence to generate us to eternal life. So Mary at the foot of the cross is generating Christ, generating us in Christ to eternal life. And therefore, yes, this is the moment of her being mediatrix of all graces. Mary generating us, generating to supernatural life, which is generating us to grace, basically, because there is no supernatural life without sanctifying grace. Basically, this is important. Supernatural life is sanctifying grace. When do we get that life which is eternal? When we have sanctifying grace. And we get sanctifying grace when? When we are baptized. If we lose it, we get it back. How? By going to confession. When we get the absolution, after having committed some sins, that absolution restitutes us, sanctifying grace lost because of our sin. So uh, it is sanctifying grace, which is life eternal, poured over to us. And that sanctifying grace is bought when, so to speak, when Jesus died throughout his life, but especially at the very completion of his redemption, which is Calvary. And on Calvary, there is Our Lady, therefore, uh, that grace was acquired by Jesus and Mary, by the Redeemer and the Co-Redemptrix. That's why Mary is Mediatrix of grace, yes, and therefore, because Mediatrix of that very uh, fundamental grace, which is life eternal, and any grace would be meaningless without having life, which is eternal. Our Lady is also mediatrix of all other graces that we can receive uh, from, from God. But, uh, yes, so Rebecca, I would, uh, yes, this is what we can say. But uh, let's be a little bit more cautious about this eternal nature to the motherhood of Mary. The motherhood in itself is a quasi-infinitum, as St. Thomas Aquinas says, because it is a maternity in relation to God, but it remains a finite, finite uh, prerogative a quality because it is the maternity of a mother, a creature, a woman. All right, so thank you. And uh, we have also something from Radio Immaculata. I think it is the a friend fire next door here. <laughs> Ave Maria is the wedding feast at Cana, the first public manifestation manifestation of Mary's mediation between God and man. Is the first public? First public one, although the Annunciation right. preceded it, but that wasn't public. <clears throat> so is that the first one public? Cana? I think so. Yes, in the order of nature, yes. If we want to distinguish with Saint Louis Grignon between Cana and uh, the visitation. Because at the visitation there is also a public oh, yes. ma mediation, right? Yes. In the sanctification of John. Right. But uh, that is a sanctification, so a mediation of sanctifying grace. The very fundamental grace. 
Kena is a mediation of all graces, if you want mm. to have that distinction in mind, because it is a mediation in the order of nature. So transforming by a lady's intervention water into wine. So it is more in a public, yes, but in the sense that a lady is also mediatrix of all other graces, even of miracles in this case, right? Yes. Uh, okay. Thank you. And then we have Fafa. <laughs> Fafa is Ave Maria. Thanks be to God for the, these sharings, Father Seraphine and Camilla. Thank you for watching. And then with the fiat, she becomes the mother of the church with the fiat at the Annunciation? Yes, of course. She becomes already the mother of the church because, because the church is already in some way present, made, though not in her full capacity, so to speak, but initially is already gathered in the womb of Ali because she's, she is also replying to the angel on behalf of all mankind, on behalf of all the faithful of Christ. She's saying her yes. So her yes includes so all our responses to Christ. That's why, yes, she already becomes mother of the church. Right, uh, we have again Rebecca. Rebecca, if our lady is mother of all, so of all souls, will she therefore be mother of all souls, including the Old Testament people? Yes, <laughs> yes, she would be, because like we were saying about the, the prophets in the Old Testament receiving grace, um, even though she hadn't yet been born, because uh, grace is not bound by time. So she's the mother of all the, all the Old Testament characters, prophets, everyone also. Yes, true. Also, uh, there are some women in the Old Testament who are a prefiguration of Our Lady. But prefiguration means that they came first, chronologically speaking, but not ontologically speaking, in terms of dignity and uh, worthiness, uh, perfection. They are less than Our Lady. Yes. They are in function of Our Lady. Yes. Right? Though they come first chronologically, they are in view of Mary. So in this case, they cannot be understood, such as uh, Judith, for example, or Mary, the, the, the sister of Moses, and many others, Rachel, many others. They are understandable in view of Mary, because their ministry, their function, their role matches the role of Mary, in a sense that prefigures the role of Mary. All right. Thank you. And uh, again, Damien. Hello, Damien. Uh, if all the graces come to us through the mediation of our lady, should we then not go directly to Jesus, the eternal father? It will be tricky here. Damien is trying mm. to give you a hard time. <laughs> You understand the question. If all the graces come to us yes. through the mediation of our lady, should we then not go directly to oh, Jesus? Okay. Should we avoid to go directly to our Lord and go always through Mary? I would I would say we can go through to, to Jesus directly as well. And like for example, in Eucharist I heard adoration, you know, we, we talk to Jesus directly in the Eucharist. Of course. Uh, and when we receive Jesus in in Holy Communion. But I would I would say as long as we're not only going directly to him and never going to Mary. Um, also, mm -hmm. also go to Mary lots as well. Right. Um, I would say. So Correct. Yes. Both. We can go to Jesus, of course. Jesus is the source of all graces. But we, even if we go directly to our Lord, we do not mean to exclude our Lady. And our Lady's presence is included in that uh, prayer. Uh, so we can go, of course, we go directly to Jesus. We adore, as you say, Jesus. We do not adore Our Lady. But she facilitates that adoration. She is there helping us to adore. And if we, even if we are not aware of it, but if we are aware of it, it changes completely. It perfects completely our own adoration. To be in the presence of Christ with Our Lady as she did, as she adores our Lord. It makes the whole thing perfect.
So we can go to Jesus, but we can never exclude our lady's participation, even if we are not aware of it. If we are aware of it, it is even better because it changes our way to go to Jesus. It perfects it. All right. Thank you, Damien, for your very deep theological point. We have Marco Fasoli, Ave Maria, benvenuto Camillo. Benvenuto. They say benvenuto because Camillo is half Italian, aren't you Camillo? Yes, I am, yes. yes. Half English, half Italian. So, again from Radio Immaculata, Camillo. Ave Maria Padre, the concept of Our Lady being the mediatrix, is it the same meaning as corridemtrix or a separate concept? If the same meaning, why the separation? I think this is a very good point to, to clarify more the distinction between mediate, mediation and co-redemption. Would you try to clarify this? What do you think? My understanding isn't yeah. too deep on the co-redemption. I've not read up much on it. Um, my, my thoughts uh, are that mediation is that all the grace comes through, comes through Mary, right. uh, you know, originally from God, from, from the Father, from Jesus, through Mary and then to us. Well, co-redemptrix means how the grace originally originated, how it was formed, rather than its mode of coming correct, to us. Correct. The way the grace was bought, the grace was acquired, the grace was got, the sacrifice of Christ, through our lady's participation, the merits of salvation were the merits of Christ, together with the merits of our Lady. This is co-redemption, co-participation in our salvation. While mediation, as you well say, uh, um, points to the, uh, to the distribution of that grace, which has been like a treasure bought on Calvary, and then that treasure is always present in the Church, ready to be, to be given to those who uh, have a need through the sacraments, through the, the work of the church, uh, of course, through the mediation of our lady, to be given to the souls through the mediation of all graces. Right, this is a very good explanation. Though if we want to be a little bit even more precise, we should also say that mediation is a bit wider than co-redemption, in a sense, because even co-redemption is a mediation, actually. is a participation in Christ, for our sake, right? So it is being with Christ for the salvation of mankind, to help mankind be reconciled with Christ. So co-redemption is also a mediation. Mediation is wider in some way than, than co-redemption. And therefore we can say that mediation is the very general soteriological action of our the action that is in relation with our salvation. Mediation is the very general term, including co-redemption, which is participation in our salvation on Calvary, especially on Calvary, and distribution of all graces, mediation of all graces, so distribution, and then also the intercession of Mary. Intercession, she prays for us, she begs our Lord for us, it is included in this mediation. So, just to finish on this, uh, if one day, and we hope very soon, the Pope may declare a new Marian dogma, the fifth, which is very important and very needed for the Church, the Pope could easily, say easily, but <laughs> declare uh, the, the dogma of the universal mediation of our Lady, right? including, and of course it is needed to explain what is included, in the universal mediation is included her co-redemption, her mediation of all graces, so distribution, her intercession as advocate. Mm -hmm. All this is included in this uh, maternal mediation of Adi, which is same as saying spiritual maternity of Mary. Mary is my mother, what does it mean? When people have difficulties to understand all this, because, no, Christ, Christ, only Christ, only Christ. But the, the very easy question is this. Is Mary your mother? 
do people have any difficulty in acknowledging this? Is Our Lady my mother? Yes, and how? She is my mother because she gave birth to me. When? On Calvary. By co-redeeming me. And if she gave birth to me, she takes care of my soul. She gives me what I need. And she prays for me. She accompanies me. This is mediation. This is maternal, uh, spiritual maternity. So uh, we should ask everyone, is Our Lady your mother? Right? If you say yes, you cannot say but yes. <laughs> you are saying that Our Lady is mediatrix of all graces and coordinatrix. All right. Thank you, everyone, dear friends, for your participation. We have some still some other questions. Maybe we can do a little bit quickly. Marco Fazzoli, let's see this one. Is Mary being the mediatrix of all graces the reason why the church is the only ordinary source of graces? Since she also gave birth to the church in Calvary. You understand the question? Is Mary being the mediatrix of all graces? The reason why the church is the only ordinary source of graces, since she also gave birth to the church on Calvary. Yes, Marco, you are right. It's a very good point. Uh, lady, the church is the only place of salvation. Outside the church, no salvation, because basically there is only one mediation in Christ, under Christ, and this is our ladies. Our ladies' mediation prepares the mediation of the church. Right, very good point, Marco, <laughs> as the our technicians highlight. So, uh, uh, Arul John Bosco, no offense to our lady, should our Lord need at least mediation to dispense his graces? Not that uh, our Lord needs it, but it is our Lord who requests it. It is his will to join to him his mother. God doesn't need anything, <laughs> but in his providence, in his love for us, he has chosen to be man, to be incarnate, and to have a mother. So since he has a mother, he has a need of a mother, a need of Mary, as we do have a need, right? Yes, of a mother. All right, the very last one, and then we wrap up. Camilo, this is for you, possibly. Marco, again, if Mary is the mother of the church. Oh, we, we responded this to already. Yes. Yes, we responded. There is, uh, we don't, oh, no, this is different. If Mary is the mother of the church and the church is the source of all graces, can we say that without Mary there can be no salvation? Well, I, I just, you know, and lots of the saints say that that is the case. People like St. Alphonsus Liguori say, you know, if you don't turn to Mary, you won't be, you won't, you won't be saved. No. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure other saints uh, say similarly. So, and yeah, St. Louis de Montfort says, for example, you know, anyone who has had recourse to Mary and persevered in that recourse to Mary, uh, you know, will not be lost for certain. Yes. So I think one needs to have really some kind of relationship with, with Our Lady. Yes, of course. Um, it's a good point. As we say, be outside the church, no salvation. Analogically, similarly, we can say outside Our Lady, no salvation. Can we say that, Camilo? Yes, yes, yes I think we, think we can. <laughs> I think we can. We can, uh, making all these distinctions, but uh, with a filial heart we say, thank you, Our Lady, for being our mother. And thank you, Camilo, for being together with us. Uh, well, very interesting hour. Very good. Uh, all right. So thank you, everyone, for participating in this show. We wrap up with a final Regina Shelley. We may sing. If you are ready, you can prepare your voice for singing together the, the Paschal uh, Salutation. All right. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We invite our technicians to join in this, uh, in this prayer. 
Brother Osvaldo and Brother Leo. Regina Chali, let our Alleluia. Quia quemeru isi portare. Alleluia. Resurrexit sicudixit. Alleluia. Ora pro nobis terum. Alleluia. Gaudet letare Virgo Maria. Alleluia. Qui assurrexit Dominus Veri. Alleluia. Oremus, Deus, qui per resurrezione ma fini tui, Domini nostri, Gesù Cristo, mundum letificare dignatus es, presta quesumus ut per eus genitricem virginem Mariam, perpetue capiamus gaudia vite per Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen. Gloria Patri et Figlio et Spiritui Santo. Sì, veramente in principio, dunque sempre, ed in secola, secola, amen. Gloria Patri et Figlio et Spiritui Santo. Sicuterati in principio e non che sempre, e in secola, secolo romano. Gloria Patri et Figlio et Spirito in Santo. Sicuterati in principio e non che sempre, e in secola, secolo romano. Angele Dei, qui custos es mei, metivi commissum pietate superna, illumina custodi, reget guberna. Amen. Requiem eternam, dona eis Domine, et lux perpetua luce teis. Requiescant in pace. Amen. Thank you, everyone. We should apologize to people who were on Facebook who sent through some questions, but uh, next time we will be more attentive to answer all questions. Thank you for participating, and may God bless you. We conclude with a blessing. The Lord be with you. Amen. And with your spirit. May Almighty God, with the intercession of our Blessed Mother, Mediatrix of all graces, bless you. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Cheers, Camillo. Thank Cheers. you. Bye. Bye. Bye, Maria. Bye, Maria.